you never even saw it coming. That was the tagline for Silver Dollar City's premier rides liquid coaster, Buzzsaw Falls, and it was probably true. But that's just because it rarely operated. This is the history of Buzzsaw Falls and why it was a failure. Log flumes and roller coasters. Always two of the most popular ride models out there. But what if you could combine the two? That's what Buzzsaw Falls was trying to do. It was the perfect ride for anyone that wanted great thrill and a nice soaker. Opening in 1999, Silver Dollar City bought this new risky concept for $7 million. It was the tallest and fastest coaster in the park at the time, at a height of 110 feet and with a top speed of 50 miles per hour. It had free-floating sections, thrilling turns and drops, and a lift with excellent views, giving it something for everyone. And with a minimum height requirement of 42 inches, just about everyone could ride it. Although Silver Dollar City has the look and feel of the 1890s, they also have the latest in roller coaster technology. It's what the industry calls thrill convergence. Buzzsaw Falls is an example. It's part boat, part coaster. This is the type of ride, the way it's designed is it's multiple elements. We use that concept of thrill convergence, we call it, where you're taking multiple ride elements. You've got a free-floating rapids ride experience, you've got a coaster experience, you've got a stunning lift, a very steep one that gives you a view that you can see for miles and miles. You can look out at the Branson Bell, and then you've got that exciting, thrilling, steep drop down into the water, six and a half stories. So multiple elements, so everyone's going to find something that they're going to really enjoy on this ride. The coaster experienced its first issues when the opening was pushed from April to July of 1999. This was fairly minor in the grand scheme of things though, so it could be looked past. It did eventually open, so let's look at the ride experience. The boat departed the station and began a rather tame free-floating section, much like a log flume. This was a well-themed section meant to look like a logging camp. However, as you neared a rotating saw blade, your boat would transition onto rails and climb a short lift hill. Following this chain lift, you would descend through a sweeping turn in the woods, giving some excellent scenic views in the first thrilling section. This is also the first major section where I believe that the ride experienced some problems, but I'll get to that later. After this turn, you hit a short section of brakes in another lift hill, this one taking you to your maximum height. When you reach this point, you would turn 90 degrees, enter a small shack, and dive down the steepest drop on the ride, which would also take you to your max speed. When the boats hit the water, a tangled pile of fake wood, similar to the same style theming element on Splash Mountain, shot out water as your boat shot out its own wave. You would then enter another log flume-like section to re-enter the station. Seems like a pretty simple ride, right? Well, yeah, it, it kinda is. But apparently Premier didn't think so, because Buzzsaw Falls was plagued with technical issues from before day one. Computer problems were very common, as the infrared sensors on the ride commonly glitched and malfunctioned for all kinds of reasons. Nowadays, modern coasters use proximity sensors, or proxies, which are generally considered to be the much more reliable alternative. The coaster also had to be constantly pumped with water, which obviously would get very expensive very quickly. If you look at pictures of the old vehicles, you will notice the weird-looking plastic shields on all sides of the boat. These were placed to prevent flooding, so tack that onto the list of issues. One other thing that I have noticed while watching POVs of Buzzsaw Falls is that when going around the first, quote-unquote, fast turn, you can see a catwalk at the lowest point. If you look at other coasters with a similar feature, such as Mr. Freeze clones, this catwalk is there so that if the ride were to valley, guests could safely leave the ride vehicle. So Buzzsaw Falls also may have had issues with valleying. How many problems is that? Four? Five? The point I'm trying to make is that this wasn't a reliable or very well thought out attraction, and because of this, it did eventually close. It wasn't completely scrapped though. The previously mentioned turn and the lift hill were both saved and stand today. But not only that, trains still run on them. Buzzsaw Falls was reincarnated into Powder Keg, a blast into the wilderness in 2003. SNS Power, manufacturer of notable coasters Hypersonic XLC and Dodonpa, was called in to handle the project. It now stands as an air launch coaster, and it is one of the strangest coasters I have ridden. It is great though, and even without riding the original Buzzsaw Falls, I can almost guarantee that this is an improvement. Buzzsaw Falls also lives on with an Easter egg in Powder Keg's queue. One of the ride vehicles is embedded into the ceiling of the queue house, 
making it look like it blew up and landed there, fitting the explosive theme of Powder Keg. Overall, Buzzsaw Falls was one big fail with all of the issues that it had, and Powder Keg is a more than worthy tribute to its successor. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing to my channel for more stuff like this and to help me hit my goal of 700 subscribers by July. Check out Mostly Coasters, he's great, and I will see you guys next time. Sitting in the back, getting heated out my seat.